I wish to speak basically on what I call divine optimism and divine authority. An optimist is someone who sees something that is positive. An optimist is someone who even in the midst of negative sees something positive. An optimist is someone that you give a glass and it says this is half full. A pessimist will say that this is half empty. So even in this imperfection, even in these limitations of the apostles, this man Jesus was able to see beyond their weakness. He was able to see beyond you know, their shortcoming that no matter how slow or bad they may be now, that in the future they are going to change. We always say that change is the only thing that is constant, but most times we don't even believe that this is possible. If I have a friend who has done something wrong and I throw him or her away, yet I go out to say that change is the only thing that is constant. It means that I don't believe in what I am saying because if I believe that change is constant, it means that even that my friend who has done something wrong, I should believe that he or she will still change to something better. And this is what I call divine optimism. That Jesus saw that these people were filled with doubts, but yet he entrusted to them the mandate to go out, to preach, to baptize, to teach, and to bring people to God. For me, my dear brothers and sisters, this is very inspiring, personally. Because there are many people I meet, there are many people who meet me and they see my imperfection. There are those I meet, I see their imperfections. But do we stop in this, you know, vision of imperfections? Jesus did not stop at that. When the disciples, when the apostles came to Jesus on that mountain in Galilee, which when they came, they were filled with doubts. The Greek word used there is distasso. This also means they kept their distance. It means they were reluctant. It means they were hesitant. Why? Because at this moment, they did not believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. And here comes the Lord. He saw their doubt. He saw their, their skepticism. He saw everything that spelled out weakness. But yet, he went on to entrust to them this mandate, this great commission. This is so beautiful, my dear brothers and sisters, if you really think about this, that our God is a God who does not see. He is blind to our weakness. He is blind to our you know, shortcomings, but he sees our potentials. It is so beautiful if you really think about this. St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, from verse 8, he says, When Jesus ascended into heaven, he took, you know, captive of our captivity. Not just that, but he gave us gifts. The gift he gave us, my dear brothers and sisters, is the gift of his presence and the gift of authority. The gift of authority is also part of the gift of his presence. But the first thing I would like us to remember, my dear brothers and sisters, is this sense of optimism. The sense, the mentality, the orientation, the belief that no matter how bad something is now, it will turn out to become good. It's not good to always be thinking negative. Yes, sometimes we think negative because of the imperfections around us. But one thing that this ascension teaches me personally is that no matter how bad the situation may be now, tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be better. So that I don't kill myself today even though I have not seen tomorrow. So when Jesus demonstrated his divine optimism, you know, the apostles were so slow in learning, they were filled with doubt, but yet, Jesus saw in them the conquering of the entire universe. You can imagine 11 of them, 
11, as we know, is an imperfect number. Because at this moment, Judas Iscariot was not part of them. And at this moment, Matthias was not, you know, elected yet. So they were 11. Remember, there are 12 tribes of Israel. But here is an imperfect number. But even though in this imperfection, Jesus was able to entrust to them. There are many families that have a lot of problems today. Not because they are supposed to have problems, pero maybe the son or the daughter made a certain mistake in his life or in her life. And the parents, they give up on that child. Why do we give up on one another when Jesus did not give up on us? Why do we send people away because of simple mistakes they make? But we are filled with a lot of mistakes. But here is Jesus who did not look at the mistakes, at the shortcomings, at the limitations of his disciples, but he went on to look at the brighter side. I am not saying that it is not good to recognize the imperfections so that we can correct. Pero we should pay more attention that this person will become better tomorrow. The person will change. No matter how bad somebody is today, sending the person away will not change the person. What changes a person is to give the person love. And that's what Jesus did today. Divine optimism. Secondly, Jesus gave them authority. He said, all authority has been given to me. St. Paul mentions that in the second reading today. Everything has been put under his feet. That's the meaning of authority. But the authority of Jesus, as everything is put under his feet, the authority of Jesus is not to match, to suppress, to oppress, to destroy. No, that's not the authority of Jesus. The authority of Jesus is the authority that empowers us with the Holy Spirit. The authority that endows us with love. The authority that endows us with kindness. The authority that lifts us up. It's not the authority to shout on us. It's not the authority to suppress us. It's not the authority to destroy us. But it's the authority to empower us, to change us. That is the authority that Jesus gave to us today. You know, when I attend marriage uh, ceremonies, weddings, you see the wife and the husband signing the marriage certificate. It is very funny if we really look at what happens in such marriages, in some of these marriages after that. The certificate we receive, the paper we receive, the, the the authority we receive as married people is not an authority to the husband alone or to the wife alone. It's not an authority to go and punch your wife, to beat up your wife. No. The, the marriage certificate we receive is not a certificate to go and slap your wife and you know, bully your wife. No. It's not that authority. But the certificate we receive is a certificate to love. It's not a certificate to cause your wife to cry every night or to make your husband a miserable man. No, that's not the certificate we receive. Mga barangay captains, mayors, president, popes, bishop, priest, our ordination, our calling to serve is to serve the people, it's not to terrorize the people, it's not to oppress the people. As a priest, it will be a very, very, you know, wrong a metaphysical sin for a priest to say i will curse you how can you curse you are ordained to bless you are not ordained to curse the barangay captain mga mayors mga leaders mga governors nobody is you know entrusted with this post to embezzle funds to be corrupt to destroy people no we are entrusted as public servants to uplift the people to give the people joy we are not elected to destroy other people the authority that jesus has given to us is the authority to lift one another up let us remember this when we talk about authority the authority is not just about political authority or presbyterian authority but you and i we have our own authorities our time is an authority. Our position is an authority. 
Because sometimes we use our positions, even in the families, to put down other people, to destroy other people. In a family where you have someone who is a medical doctor and the other person has no degree, there is a tendency that the one who is a medical doctor will be speaking anyhow, will use bad words on the one who is nobody. But our position is to lift one another up, not to destroy other people. What about our talents? Our talents are also authorities given to us. Remember, the angel said to the apostles, Why are you standing here looking? You know, Jesus was taken away from our side, not because he is not present. He continued to be present among his people. He continued to be present among the least, the last, and the lost. He continues to be present. Remember Matthew 25, which I always quote, verse 40 and 45. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you did to me. So, whenever we are, you know, exploiting other people, we are also exploiting Jesus. The angel said, why are you looking up? Look down. Look at your brothers. Look at the one who are suffering. Look at those who are hungry. Look at those who have nothing to eat. Look at those who are emotionally broken. Look at those who are lost in life. Look at those who are suffering pains. Look at them. Stop looking up. The best way to look up is to look at you, one another. The best way to look up to see that ascended Christ is to look at the needs of one another. That's the best way to look up. In the sixth article of faith, we always remember, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. To sit at the right hand of God the Father, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is not a physical sitting, but is a symbolic language of authority. Jesus is not sitting at the right hand of the Father, which means authority to judge and destroy us. But he is sitting there as our advocate, as our helper. As we celebrate this Mass today, let us ask our Blessed Mother Mary to help us, to teach us the best way to live a life as persons of ascension. As I shared in my video, to be a person of our ascension means you know, to rise above our habits, to rise above our limitations, to rise above all the toxic experience that control us. No, our toxic experience, our negative thoughts should not control us, but what should control us is the love of Christ. That's what makes us people of ascension. I remember what Pope Francis said. Each and every one of us have experienced the fragrance of the love of Christ on that cross. To be people of ascension is to share that love that we have experienced from the cross of Christ. Let us pray today as we continue this Mass that the ascension of the Lord will make us people of transcendence, people who rise above everything that make us to condemn other people or to destroy other people because of their mistakes 